but you're gonna see fishing boat captain Dustin Pack says he's never seen the red tide in Tampa Bay this bad. I hope that it's the worst is behind us in Tampa Bay. I pray that it is, but I'm not holding my breath. The toxic algae blooms, which cause fish kills and can be harmful to humans, happen almost every year in and around Florida's coast. But for the lifelong fishermen, this year is different. Typically what happens is red tide happens offshore. With currents and tides or wind direction, it can be blown into the beach. What's different about this one is this started inside of Tampa Bay. We have the worst fish kill red tide we've ever had. Back in the spring, 215 million gallons of wastewater were released into Tampa Bay from this former phosphate plant to relieve pressure on a leaking reservoir. You can see cleanup is still underway. Environmentalists say the disaster that happened at Piney Point is fueling the red tide that we're seeing in Tampa Bay. Now, five organizations are suing the governor, the acting secretary of Florida's Department of Environmental Protection, and the owners of Piney Point. They want the plant cleaned up and closed down safely, so disasters of this magnitude never happen again. But Governor Ron DeSantis claims the science is pointing in a different direction. The scientific consensus is clear. It didn't cause the red tide. The red tide was here. The governor saying it was Hurricane Elsa in July and not Piney Point's wastewater, which led to this year's historic fish kills. Asked if he might be playing politics by not declaring a state of emergency over the red tide in Tampa Bay, DeSantis was defiant. How did I politicize red tide? They were the ones who were saying, you're, you've got to declare a state of emergency. And so we asked them why. Well, they didn't know why. The data are really clear that this algae bloom that was occurring in Tampa Bay started well before Hurricane Elsa passed by. Maya Burke with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program says, while money made available so far by the governor's office has helped clean up the bay, they need more of it now. She says not only has the water not looked this bad since the 1970s, before there was a Clean Water Act, but the governor's timeline for what's causing the red tide is way off. What Hurricane Elsa did was it changed the wind patterns and it put all those, you know, thousands of tons of dead fish right up along the downtown waterfront in St. Petersburg, and it was an assault to the senses. Agricultural Commissioner Nikki Freed, a Democrat who just announced her run for governor, thinks based on the neurotoxin levels in the water, the red tide and fish kills could be a recurring problem in the bay for months. We saw the emergency. We saw the governor able to come out there at the very front end of, of Piney Point. Um, and then he forgot about it and, and kind of moved on to the next issue. And instead of continuously having resources and support, uh, it got, you know, brushed under the rug. Back on the water, Pack says some fishermen and guides he knows have had to leave for work elsewhere while the bay deals with an unprecedented fish kill. Its conservation group, Tampa Bay Waterkeeper, is one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. We keep doing that, you know, and we keep having these year in and year out. I don't know if we're going to have a bay left. You know, we'll have water here. Nobody's going to want to swim in it. Nobody's going to fish in it.